No sooner had Napoleon found himself being promoted to the rank of general, had he soon discovered that, while one's fortunes may rise, they can just as quickly fall. For the brothers Robespierre, they were ousted from power, and the French government was in a state of flux. With the government in such disarray, and royalist forces still a for true force to contend with in France, a rebellion broke out in Paris. Now at the time, Napoleon was in the capital city, and he had been asked to serve in the army of the West, but refused to do so. Because of Napoleon's rebuff at the prospect of serving in an army that he did not want to be part of, his career was spiraling out of control. But the rebellion within the capital prompted government authorities to call upon him to command the impromptu force which was being assembled to protect the rebel government. Now, Napoleon quickly grasped that artillery was the key to the successful defense of Paris, and, organizing his cannons, he would order grape shot to be fired within the streets. As a result of this decision, Napoleon successfully eliminated 1,400 loyalist soldiers and forced the remainder to flee the city. Overnight, Napoleon Bonaparte became a national hero and had the support of the new government. As a reward, he was promoted to the commander of the interior and given command of the Army of Italy. It was also during this tumultuous time that he met Josephine de Buharnet, and the two would be wed on March the 9th, 1796. Going on the immediate offensive, Napoleon would rout the Sardinians within two weeks of his promotion, and, turning his attention to the Austrians, he would successfully defeat them in the siege of Mantau, and he would do so to such devastating effect that the Austrians lost control over northern Italy. With the Austrians reeling, Napoleon would then turn his attention into the Austrian heartland, invading and gaining a massive victory at the Battle of Tarvis. Following the battle would come the Treaty of Leoben, which would give control of northern Italy and the Low Countries to France. In addition to this, Austria was given control of Venice. And in order to help secure this particular provision of the treaty, Napoleon would march on the city, capture it, and would end the 1,100-year independence of the city-state. It was also at this time that Napoleon began to find influence within politics. He would found two newspapers, each designed for a specific audience. The first one was specifically for soldiers, while the other one were for the French people. When more fr uh, royalists started to create rumblings within France, Napoleon would send soldiers in to root them out under the command of Pierre Augereau. Once more, the government found itself indebted to Napoleon. With this continual debt towards Napoleon, he began to set his sights on trying to deal with the English. One of his ideas was to invade England, a feat which had not been done in over 700 years. But the problem is that Napoleon realized that the French Navy could never hope to defeat the Royal Navy. Instead, he decided to attack the English colonial possessions found within the Middle East, the Mediterranean, and in Asia. Now, Napoleon had been ordered by the government to secure a trade route for France to India. If this meant he had an opportunity to take out the English, even better. In May of 1798, Napoleon was elected into the French Academy of Sciences, and as part of his Egyptian campaign, he would bring along with him 167 scientists, mathematicians, naturalists, chemists, and geologists. The scientific portion of the campaign proved to perhaps be the most successful part of it, as he would make many discoveries, especially when it came to Egyptology, but perhaps most importantly of all, the Rosetta Stone. On June the 9th, 1798, Napoleon would have a great uh, victory in capturing Malta and would only lose three men in the process. Less than a month later, the French would arrive in Egypt and soon found themselves in battle against the Mamluks. Successfully defeating them, Napoleon soon found himself in trouble as the Royal Navy sent a fleet under the command of Sir Horatio Nelson to attack the French. Losing all but two vessels, Napoleon 
instead of looking at the naval battle as being a massive defeat and setback to his campaign, decided to turn his attention towards the Ottoman Empire. And as he marched along through what is the present-day Holy Land, he would conquer numerous towns, including Arish, Gaza, Jaffa, and Haif. However, when he reached Accra, he found himself having a difficult time laying siege upon the city. And, as his men became ill, realized it was an ill-fated adventure. As such, he would have his first major retreat occur as he would march away from the city and head back to Egypt. But while most people would look at this defeat as being something that would permanently stun his career, Napoleon had other thoughts in mind. For while he was in Egypt and the Middle East attempting to expand the French influence, he had learned there was a great deal of events occurring back in main, in mainland France, and as such, his presence was needed there, now more than ever. For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show, and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.